Not Shaken, or Cultural Appropriation. Welcome, everyone. I'm Bronwyn Knox. Allow me to introduce my guests. Introduce my guests. <laughs> David <laughs> B. Anderson and David Lawler. Hey, I wrote Davy B. and Davy L. Oh, sorry. Well, did you want me to say Davy B. and Davy L? Well, never mind. The, the mood is gone. Uh, it sounds like, Forget it. I don't know, like the Spice Girls or something. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm Posh Spice. He's, uh, what are you, Shorty Spice? Uh, no, there's no shorty. Are you black spice? I'm sorry, oh Mel B. No, you're Mel B. Because you're black spice. Anyway, sorry. tonight we're discussing "You Only Live Twice," and the code words are "I love you." Why comes after W, right? Uh yeah. Okay. All right. A B C D E F G. <laughs> I have to do the whole song. All right. Well, I, got, right. I got the little. Uh, for before we start, I have the Danny Perry review. It's a small one this time. Okay. Uh, you only live twice. British, 1967. Color, 117 minutes. Fifth James Bond. Film has Sean Connery's British agent trying to prevent a nuclear war. What else? Someone snatched an American rock, rocket, and the chief suspect is Russia. Bond pretends to be killed so he can do this his snooping without anyone looking for him. He discovers that the culprit is Spectre's Blofeld, Donald Pleasance, whose headquarters and launching station are contained in a Japanese volcano. Not a bad Bond film, but it doesn't compare to its predecessors. The formula has become a little stale. It should have been about 20 minutes shorter. Louis Gobert directed. Roald Dahl took great liberties with Ian Fleming's novel. Freddie Young did the photography. Peter Hunt edited. John Barry composed the score. Ken Adams designed the impressive sets. I'm going to I'm gonna have to take exception with Danny there because this is, this is actually my favorite of the Sean Connery movies, this one. I think nope. it has everything and it's done so perfectly and it's like you have all the money and you can finally do whatever you want to do and i think this is the the sean connery movie that goes completely crazy as a bond film now i still like goldfinger the best <laughs> this one to me is on par with with thunderball i don't see how it's any better now I, I would put it just above thunderball and i would i actually it was weird watching this i'm like this does At least feel you know like, what the hell's going on in Thunderball. Half the movie, you don't know what the hell's going on. Yeah, and this, like, this is what I, I was thinking. As my thought was, and it's not even like it's almost like a compliment. This, this, this is a very sort of generic James Bond movie. Like, if someone was to say, "What, what's James Bond like?" Uh, you'd show him this because it's got, you know, it, it's yeah, got yeah, all, I would agree. Except volcanic base. He's, he's like he. The, but the, the, isn't this like his first trip to the Far East, where he's 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 dealing with the Orient, as it were? I, I think so, yeah. I don't know that I would call it generic in that one. You know what's generic is probably something a little more Cold War-ish. This one isn't so Cold War-ish. It's just about a guy, the crazy Donald Pleasance character, who wants to start a war between the U.S. and the yeah, Soviet Union. Yeah, I felt like this was this was Dr. No with a budget, a lot of it. Like, but, yeah. Yes, 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 yes. And, and also just, wow, the production design is incredible. Oh, yeah. It's, I mean, like, this is total Ken Adam. At, at his best and his 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 obsessions with with angled roofs you know he does this constantly and then the the base inside the volcano is so incredible to look at but it's so i mean this and it's no fault of the movie it's so you know you've watched this is why i call it kind of generic it's like you've seen so many james bond movies now like at the time it was different but now <clears> you've seen so many it kind of all blends together, so you're like it's kind of like James Bond greatest hits of like he's got the volcanic base. It does. Um, it does seem to take certain elements from different movies and puts them all together into this one, like the whole betrayed in the sack it, and all it, that stuff. It, 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 Death by Murphy bed. It's unfairly <clears throat> can be compared to like a, a Austin Powers only because you have Dr. Evil and his volcanic base and with the cat. Oh, the cat has a starring role. Did anyone notice that Donald ditched the cat? I mean, he took off at the end. He does this like, I'm out of here. Well, the making on the making of, they explain basically he's holding the cat and it was a specially trained cat, but when it, uh, somebody shot a gun while he was holding the cat, and then the cat yeah, yeah, like yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, we saw, saw that we saw react. that we saw yeah. the cat totally flipping out in his arms because all this yeah. stuff was good. There was explosions. It took him two weeks. To, took him two weeks to get the cat. Like it was like it like hid 
It was, was like, I'm just was... going to take my little cat. Just biting me. I'm... Yeah. <laughs> Boom. And then there's no, and then he's like, they had no cat. And it really, it messed it. Like, I, I don't know if they got sued, but like the cat trainer was like, what are you doing to my cat? It's all <laughs> frightened now by everything. You can't work. It's like a $10 million movie. Oh, don't, aren't you supposed to have like at least four or five different cats at the ready? No you more know? fancy feast commercials for you, Fluffy. No, no. Yeah. No, no. There, that's the kind of cat that eats it out of one of those uh, Baccarat crystal yes, dishes. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. It's pretty because you had Morris. Morris was an orange cat, and he was like, "Oh, you know anything?" And then you have the fancy feast cat, which is the white cat that he's holding. <laughs> it's a special mm-hmm. kind of cat. And then we have my cat Jerry. He'll eat anything. And he doesn't care, and he loves everyone. What kind of what kind of cat is Jerry? Is he like a gray tabby? He's a gray tabby, uh, missing a leg and a t- and part of his tail. He 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 don't he don't care about nothing. He just he he loves you. Just feed him and pet him, and he'll get all up in your business. What um, what were the circumstances between behind the loss of the appendages? We do not know. Uh, the, the theory is is that it came from it came from a shelter, and the theory is it was like you know Jerry was probably hanging around a car or something, and and then like was either like trying to like rub up against the car, and then it started or got run over. We, uh, we don't know. Hit by a car, we don't know. Cats, you know what? Cats are survivors. How old is he? I'm going to say about six. It's pretty good. It's pretty yeah. good. Little would probably just roll over and die, but Sushi's pretty uh, brave, too. She <laughs> could do that. Aww. <clears throat> anyway, we found Sushi in a car. Sushi was living in a car. <laughs> um, <laughs> so back to the movie. How do you think yeah. uh, How do you think uh, Blofeld found uh, Mr. Bigglesworth there? <laughs> Did he pick him up in a shelter? Uh, uh, yeah, right. He was looking for my oh, I'm actually thinking, like, that cat's been, I don't know if it was the same cat, but, you know, he was in Thunderball. Looks very much like him, yeah. Eating live fish. Did <laughs> you just grab right I out think of the in, um From Russia with Love, isn't that guy that they don't show him, but he's holding and petting a cat in those he's holding shots. A, yeah. He's holding a little Oh, cat. by the way. These I, aren't dog people. These are cat right. people. I want to point this out. Uh, I just happened to catch uh, the movie Red Dawn. The one with and, Dolph Lundgren? Oh, no, no. I'm sorry. You're thinking. The original. Patrick that's, that's Swayze. Right. Patrick Swayze, right? Yeah, Patrick Swayze. And, uh. The guy in From Russia with Love, the guy that uh, he ended up getting killed with the with with the shoe with the shoe uh, with the shoe pointy thing with the poison in it, you know that guy. He was like he was the uh, oh the, guy, the hapless guy that was standing at the desk. Yeah, yeah, the guy with the kind of weird face. He's in Red Dawn. He plays one a Russian in there, and I'm like, ah, hey, it's the guy. He's like way older. Oh yeah, <laughs> Red Dawn was a favorite of mine. I watched it constantly. Did you? That was another one that was at the height of paranoia between the U.S. and the U.S. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, th- I saw it. It's a Brad Pack movie. Yeah. You had to have seen it. Yeah, everybody it. was in that. That was uh, Swayze. That was uh, C. Thomas Howell, uh, Ray, Charlie Sheen, Radon, Ch- Jennifer Grey, Radon Chung. Was Radon Chung? I feel in like that? she is, but I might be mi- mixing that. I up. didn't see her. I, oh, maybe no, I'm okay. Okay. No, I you're thinking of somebody movie. else. You're thinking Different of uh, you're thinking of Quest for Fire. <laughs> Maybe. Or I'm just mi- <laughs> yeah, but that's another one that at the height of that whole paranoia that we were all dealing with, all of us, because we're all in the same age range here. Right. Mm-hmm. Um. So, written by Roald Dahl. How about that? Mr. Willy Wonka himself. Yeah, that cracked me up when I saw the credits, and then I thought, well, if Ian Fleming could write Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, why not Roald Dahl? Yeah, that was, that, was part of some, that was part of some sort of swap deal of, like, I'll help you with this if you'll help me with that kind of thing. At least that's what they say on the on the making of. Like, you know, they'll make up stories. Who knows? <laughs> but actually, this Wikipedia here that you're looking at, Roald Dahl made these comments. He said the novel that he was drawing from didn't have much of a plot. and It was basically just like a travel log. So- no, and it's but it's a great book because it 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 fits in with the continuity. I mean, we'll get to uh, I don't want to get into maybe we'll get into spoilers, but, you know, it actually happens after after on Her Majesty's Secret Service where some stuff happens and Bond is in, in disheveled mode and he goes to Japan and stuff happens. Oh, and, OK. So he decided so to. The, well, he would he decided to have some fun um, in, in lieu of a, a funeral for his wife, I guess. But yeah, then and, actually we do see at the end of this movie that that. They were planning on making Honor Majesty's Secret Service. Mm-hmm. Right. We did that next. They were going to make that yeah. right after that. So we we start off with a weird Cookie Monster ship that goes and consumes another ship, and I kept going Cookie <laughs> every time. Well, it's a little more of like a kind of a, ro- a robotic, menacing Pac-Man that just swallows spaceships up whole in space. Mm-hmm. I guess brings them back down through that volcano, and and how how does Donald Pleasance have a plan? To start a nuclear war, what is he going to do specifically with those ships? 
I think he's I think he's tra- he's not doing like in say like Spy Who Loved Me where he's trying to just destroy everyone and then live in his under the sea. That was base. yeah, that was submarines. He had like a, a, a he's, he's, US and I Soviet. think he just wants to. Uh, he's basically like it's part of the specter, you know, the kind of like terrorism extortion. Like I think he's basically. It seems like he's trying to get both sides to destroy each other. I think, and then and then he'll like he he's like creating a new he'll create a new order <laughs> or something like General Zod. I don't know. He I feel like he just wanted to raise suspicion. Like they don't really go into get rid of like, the U S U S spacecraft and then they'll suspect Russia. Then they get rid of the Russian spacecraft. Well, and he's then lying. Russians and, suspect and, the USA, and then but, yeah, whoever's but, left over can. But take he doesn't over. have a specific reason. Well, no, because it's mutually assured destruction. At the end, he has some sort of big rocket that needs to be destroyed. At the end, you know, with the danger level and the button that he has to find, and you know, (laughs) the red button. Do not the exploder button. The exploder button. Yeah, there's something called an exploder button in the subtitles. We were looking at that, and I was like, (laughs) exploder button. I even like one of my um my because I play The Sims, and one of my characters is a writer, and I have her writing books, and I had her write a book called Exploder Button. It's not just in the (laughs) subtitles; they say it. That's a line of dialogue. Push the exploder button. It's, it kills my bias. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I'm going to keep but, doing uh, Dr. Loomis jokes. I mean, this. yeah, I think Blofeld just wanted to raise general hell. And then there was some other Asian superpower that would take over once the USA and the Russia had destroyed each other. Then it'd be like, well, now there's room for us. There's, but th- this is really it's manipulative. good. Hmm? Because it's sort of like, okay, it reminds me a little bit of Die Another Day because Bond is like disappeared for a long time. Nobody knows whether or not he's living or dead. In that movie, he was a prisoner, and he was released. And remember, he had the big striped beard. Uh, yeah. And uh, in this one, they, I guess, deliberately want to kill him or, or make it look they, like he's yeah, dead. Yeah, for, the, for a secret dead. agent. Again, he's like, it's this weird thing where it's like they want him to be a secret agent, yet he's completely famous. <laughs> of like, he's a famous secret agent. Everybody knows about Everybody knows who he is. He's famous. He's in the paper. And it's like, well, okay. And, and by the way, this starts, I mean, when, uh, for, okay, first those things get, taken in space with with the great john barry score which yeah, is I, yeah. that, that chunk is iconic i mm-hmm. would think and then you get into the movie and he's in he's in is he in japan or is in he's, he's in, in asia he's in hong kong and that's right yeah and, and then he's, he's there and chick. It, it's so you know why do chinese go say something from other guys and i'm like whoa this is, <laughs> yeah it's nice oh hello yeah but you, you know you could say that back then and, and then and, she goes in there way yes and I'm like, whoa! <laughs> She's been dubbed, you know, by some white actor, probably. And I'm like, you think we taste it, huh? <laughs> Wait a minute. Mom, she, she you know, didn't sound huh? like. Did she sound like Squiggy? I mean, that, I don't she remember sounds that way. Like, <laughs> you know, she sounds like Joe Coy's mom. You know, why you do this to me, oh, huh? Joe Coy. Yeah. Joseph. I gotta throw some Joe Coy in now. Uh, mm. He's a really funny stand-up. He's usually on Adam Carolla, and he's do- he does these impersonations of his mom, and it's like freaking hilarious. He's oh, okay. laughing like crazy. <laughs> um, so they arrange for this death, and then he has to go to Japan and insinuate himself into the culture, which is just I I love that. I think it's wonderful. Although they, and it's like so much money is spent. So much there's so much money spent and so much work done to do something that could be much more simple. How would you like, but no, how would you like to have like a cabinet that opens up and there's a fully stocked bar and then you can just close the door? I mean, it's like, it's like this whole room is made up of these cabinets and then there's all this art around. And also it has the Ken Adams slanted roof thing, ceiling. And it's just, oh my God, it's a feast on the eyes. And then Karen, Karen Dior comes in and she's all gorgeous too. And there's the movie is populated with incredibly gorgeous Asian women too. There's a girl in here. I forget. I didn't want to, I didn't want to forget. She was in Godzilla, King Kong versus Godzilla. That's where I recognized her from because I was looking at this chick and I was like, I've seen her in a Godzilla movie and I wasn't being flippant or anything. And she's not she's not one of those two in, in the Mothra movie where they're in the little cage. There's no, not one of them. Um, <laughs> one of them. One of them is in the Mothra movie. Uh, mm. One of these girls. I'm not quite sure which one. I think it might have been Aki. The girl who played Aki was in the Mothra movie. No, no, no. I'm sorry. Aki was in the Godzilla movie and the girl who plays uh, Kissy Suzuki. I can't believe that's her name. Was in the uh, the other movie, the Mothra movie, but she's. And I gotta say, I gotta say, this is kind of later in the movie, but the, he kind of develops a, a, like an, almost like a relationship with this woman until she dies. Are you talking and then, about? Are you talking about Aki? Yeah, the one that gets poisoned. She gets and, horribly and, poisoned. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then I'm like, you know, and then literally like five seconds later, he just he don't give half a crap, and I'm like, you know, you did kind well, of yeah. a little bit of a connection there. I know he's James Bond and everything, but he, can we? But do we have to spend five minutes like weeping? You know, he'll weep later. I mean, he, he's just to get the work. 
People are trying to kill him. He has to get the well, light. I'm, I'm still trying to figure out. Okay, so he goes in. The, they're in the submarine. I'm still trying to figure out how did they get that desk? How did they get they got two desks in that submarine? <laughs> did they build the desk in the submarine? We which, got which? Well, one? you got, oh, oh you got, you're talking you got, about. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you got where, money, money, got yeah. Her, got oh yeah, this movie. Up. This is another one I want to mention. Even though parts of it were shot at Pinewood in London, but the movie doesn't take place in London at all. Right? No, I don't think they ever go. Just, no, no, like, I don't think so. Yeah, it's completely they're they're in the Far East. They don't go to. Um, I mean, they shoot, but it wasn't like a license to kill situation where they had to stay away from England for tax reasons or whatever or something like that. But here, I think it was just money. It wasn't just money. It was cheaper. I guess because that's like an American action movie. I can't no, wait to get uh, to that uh, one. Moonraker was most. I think like ninety five percent of it was shot in France because of tax reasons. How much? How, how about a nice trivia question here? What movie right. was? What movie would you guess in the James Bond canon was the majority of it was shot in, in England? Which one do you think that might have been? That was shot. In- do you know the answer? Or are you just trying to see it? I'm thinking um, maybe later on, maybe in the Craig years, maybe uh, Spec no, or maybe Skyfall. Skyfall seemed to be predominantly London. Man, I literally had, would have to go through each one in my brain. Yeah, I have no clue. But thinking about it, I mean, like the James Bond movies have this international, and it's like, where are we going to next? That's always the great thing about when you well, pop know, in the James Bond movie is where are, you, where are we going of, next? A lot of times when it, there's either some sort of jungle or 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 <laughs> or forest set, it's always a black park, like behind the Pinewood Studios. That's mm-hmm. usually where they shoot those. They can literally be like when in Die Another Day, it's supposed to be South Korea, but it's just or, or North Korea. Well, not and necessarily, then, not necessarily. Shoot, shooting locations, but the actual center, the the whole, the, the central premise of the story taking place. The premise of the story Where shot in England. Yeah, hmm. yeah. Uh, about England. Oh man, I don't think any of them really, because they always are these globe trotting. Maybe Skyfall then, because at least they, I know they left. Skyfall. But they I mean, came like the back. whole the whole second yeah, half of the movie. Yeah, Skyfall. Takes place. A good chunk of the story is England. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's on his uh, ancestral homeland. <laughs> <laughs> Which is where David well, Niven wait. lived. <laughs> What's the last movie though? What's the last Daniel Craig movie that we watched? The last one was mm-hmm. uh, Spectre, right? Spectre. Spectre. But because I, I do remember that quite a bit of that being in England too. At the end, at the end, where they basically re, they repurpose the ending of Skyfall, where they have to fight in a building, and it's like the the the, the yeah. But like the ending is in England, but the, he's there's lots of globe trotting in that one. There's, he's Mexico City, then he's. Back in England, then he's going somewhere else, then he's coming back, then they're doing this, <laughs> and then he goes to Rome, and then there's that weird uh, specter base in, in the desert or wherever that place was. Right. Okay, so the way all this comes together is he goes to Japan, meets up with Aki. There's a lot of subterfuge because we don't know whether or not she's a good guy or a bad guy because right, she right, seems right. to be running, and then he fought, he slips. I mean, they, they, they rig up this uh, impressive trap just to get him in there for a meeting with this guy, Tiger, and it turns out that they're all friends. Yeah, so. I wonder what the point of that well, no, was. Like, couldn't they just stuff invite before him? That, there's stuff before that. She she drops him off at this place to meet somebody, and then he gets in a fight with this dude. Char- oh, and- she's going to meet Charles Gray. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. the criminologist. Gray. It's the criminologist, right? But, right, who gets yeah. killed That's by... That's his first appearance yeah, yeah. as in mm-hmm. a Bond movie, because he later appears in Diamonds Are Forever. Um, as Blofeld. As Blofeld. Yeah. Blofeld. This is like, you know, okay, this is sort of like a an end of an era here, because I think this is the last... Uh, well, it's the last good Sean Connery film, and it's probably the last Sean Connery film uh, before they had changed the actors. We went to Lazenby, but then we be- went back to Connery because. Yeah. Who, by I, the way, Connery looks he looks puffy. He looks bored. He, he looks, looks like he doesn't I, be there. Yeah, I mentioned that to Bronwyn. I noticed his gut. He's got kind of a gut here, and also because of you, and I blame you for this, Anderson. I'm now mm-hmm. noticing his rug, and I'm noticing it more. It's, it's much- helmet hair. It's helmet. It's much more prominent, and it doesn't. It doesn't really look good. It's not a good rug. What do you think? He doesn't care. He's like, eh, it's good enough. I don't care. It's like he's like, they look good enough to you. It's like, fine. I don't give a crap. <laughs> he had. I'm like out. A, Based on some of the behind the scenes photos I saw, he had a special lady who took care of his rug. <laughs> her entire. Job. I saw. I mean, that was like yeah. her. Jo- she was in charge of the rug, and she's always he there. Do a very good job because he's had. He had better <laughs> rugs. In movies, if you see the movie Marnie, that's uh, around. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's yeah. that's a good rug. It's kind of it's kind of a partial I piece. Think, I think I know why that is. It's because in Marnie, that was shot in 1964, so he still had this kind of wet look. The mm-hmm. wet look was very popular with men in the in the early to mid 60s, and um, it's kind of combed to to look like a wet look, so it's easier. To he, but he's like he went from that to Goldfinger that 
you know, it's it's a good piece, but it looks like a piece too. It's a different kind of piece, or it's, it's styled different, but it's that's obviously a piece. And but then you get also, into Thunderball. Again, that's, it's, 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 kind of, this is very Thunderball. This is kind of Thunderball here. But it's now we're just, getting into this dry look, which became popular in the late '60s, and mm-hmm. then and then I mean, like it's just more and more obvious as you go on to Diamonds Are Forever, and then much later with Never Say Never Again. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, like everybody knew it. I mean, and everybody wears hair pieces to a certain extent. That's why everybody has perfect hair in TV when they do. Or because, what they do it now is they'll get transplants, or they'll and, they'll, they'll, and they'll then they'll they'll maybe be a in, transplant and a partial piece and or a little bit of this. They actually do. That. You know that that whole secret formula that they used to show in commercials where you spray it on this hair. They they were using that in Hollywood for years anyway. To oh yeah, cover up certain things. You know, I just yeah. got a haircut today, and I I found yeah. my my hair. <laughs> We all got haircuts finally because of this whole freaking COVID thing, right? Regan got a haircut first. She turned herself into a mop. Uh, Brahman got a haircut. It's shorter. And then I went and got a haircut today, too. I'm, I'm gratified to know I still have perfect hair, even at my age. <laughs> There's a whole lot wrong with you, but your hair's okay. Yes. <laughs> I got it. I'll show you a picture, maybe. Um, <laughs> But I don't you. know why, but I'm oblivious <laughs> to all these Connery hair issues. I don't look closely at him, and I can't. An- Anderson less. Anderson mm-hmm. prides himself on his ability to. Spot I notice these things. I'll have some. He did it with about, Shatner too. He did it with Shatner. I have some. Com- I'll have some comments about Roger Moore and his interesting hair issues. There's interesting. <laughs> okay. yeah, it's interesting. When, when we get, to, when we get but, to that. Oh, we yeah. pull. No, we, uh, Connery tries to pull off a Moorism here when he said something. What did he say? Bon Appetit. Oh, yeah, he goes Bon Appetit. And when he kind of does that's it. That's when they, somebody gets eaten by. Uh, yeah, the big German dude. Piranha. Oh, gets yeah, dumped yeah. into that's way later. But yeah, that is way later. The Piranha. The Piranha. But I want to I remember, we want to point out one case. Okay, so he gets in there. He fights with the. He, he, he kind of tries to fight with this guy. And this is where it's like I noticed like stuntmen, weird continuity issues. All right, where, you're, talking, you're talking about when Charles Gray gets killed? Charles Gray gets killed. Uh, knife, there's some sort and he of ninja guy. You don't even hear it either. It, it's just his knife going through a paper he wall. He starts talking and then he just. Eh. Um, <laughs> there's some sort of he ninja like, guy who has the mask. He's like, perhaps you it, should jump to the left. <laughs> get it? Yeah. You should jump to the left. I get it. Very funny. I get it. I get it. <laughs> you should jump <laughs> to the left. All right. I'm trying to get her to react. She's like looking at me like, no. <gasps> no, no. Uh, <laughs> So he's chasing the guy who, by the way, has a mask for for no reason other than for convenience of the plot. Really, there's no he has a medical face mask, right? Oh, yes, we were yeah. commenting on he has that. A, this yeah. is a medical mask, and I'm like, well, okay, well, it's just it's just for convenience to help him because then when he chases the guy, and this is what I noticed when he chases the guy, it's it's the stuntman who is shorter than him, the guy who did the original uh, gun barrel, I think, at Bob Simmons or something. Oh, really? Oh. See, he's chasing him. And then the guy that he's chasing is probably another stuntman who's taller. So there's a shorter guy chasing after a taller guy. But, you know, Connery is actually taller than this little Asian dude. Way <laughs> so taller. Weird, Way. I mean, like. Disparency. Yeah. So then, you know, he gets in the scuffle. He beats him up. He takes his mask. And then he just pretends. Oh, he, he takes wears his spats, too. He over. takes his shoes with his spats because apparently that's an identification marker. If he's wearing the spats, he's got the face mask. And a hat too, right? Not- he goes in when he fights the guy. He fights the guy with a. He gets in there and he somehow gets in there, and then he fights a guy with a couch. <laughs> Who throws a couch? <laughs> As he's there exactly. with the couch. By the way, that is the grandfather of Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Really? Get out yeah. of here! Really? Big Samoan dude. Yeah. Really? Grandfather yeah. of the Rock. Hmm, that's that guy. Interesting. Yeah. He raises an eyebrow. How about it's that? It's either his his grandfather or his father, but he's he is a relation. Well, I mean, like, you know, when somebody throws a couch at you or something, you can definitely smell what The Rock is cooking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! hey <laughs> He used to make jokes okay. about me because I made films and everything, and I had a friend named Rudy, and he would, he, would, he would announce me like I'm a wrestler, and he would say I was famous for my director's cut. He would say, here comes Dave Lawler with his director's cut. Uh, yes. You remember that? I remember. Mm. <laughs> he was a big wrestling nut, so he, would, uh, he always said I was from Piscataway, New Jersey. Or something like that. There's because there was a wrestler that had a similar name to yours. That's how the whole thing's. I don't remember. I don't uh, know wrestling. Dave, but... was there a Dave in wrestling? Yeah. David, do you yeah, know? That was a, a, a Jerry Lawler. Jerry, oh, Lawler. Jerry Lawler. Jerry Lawler. That's who was right because I know Jerry Lawler. Everybody always say, "Hey, Dave, Lawler, are you related to Jerry, Jerry Lawler, Lawler from?" <laughs> uh, I believe is is he not the, the Andy Kaufman guy? He was the guy who did wrestle Andy Kaufman. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and that's he wrestled. He he hit him really hard on David Letterman one time. You know, because Kaufman was being, um, you know, 
unpleasant well, that to was, him. That, that was a... And I, mean, I believe Jerry saw... Lawler is from Tennessee, and I have family from Tennessee, but I don't think I'm related to him because that name doesn't come from me. <laughs> Back on track, we were talking about... So we were throwing couches, throwing couches we're related and... to The Rock. Yeah. He meets up with... And he just sort of, he beats him up, he somehow beats him up, I guess, with the couch, and then he just sort of throws him, I'm just going to put you over here in the bar. <laughs> yeah. And then drink yeah. this liquor that I really don't... Whoa! He's like, whoa! Yeah, he said like it was the, Siamese vodka. Siamese vodka. Siamese vodka. I can't believe they make vodka. It's Siam. Uh, <laughs> and this is where I got confused. I'm like, I somehow got people confused of like, okay, then he leaves the building. I'm like, why? Why? He leaves why the building. Is the he, woman he, that was helping him, trying to kill him, and then she's his friend again. I'm like, no, and she, then she's, she took him there. She's got the and car. Then, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he got the fight. And then she gets him out of there. Yeah, I had a question. That car. Why are all the instructions in the car in English? Why aren't they in Japanese? I don't understand that. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> so that we think, could see it. Obviously, it's a concern. So we could see it. Right. And also There's your the, volume control. It's right there. And also, uh, she's driving and he's talking into his little view screen with a really crappy blue screen effect. Yeah. And it's totally I don't know exactly where that thing was located. It's not in the front. Because he's looking over the side. Is it in the back seat? It looked, like, it... it looked like all the fancy machinery was in the back seat or in the because it looks like a two seater, you know. Mm -hmm. So there's like maybe a console in the back there in the immediate back right behind him. And that's that that's where all the fancy stuff looked like it was. And then positioned. he finally she finally takes him to the uh, to tiger 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 Tanaka, who is that who is actually in the book. It's like the, when you Except think of like, why why does she have why does she start running? Yeah, so like then he'll chase her, and then he falls and... through the little. I mean, he falls through the thing, yeah, and into the IKEA chair. But then, yeah, yeah, then they're all. Friends, and man, there's so. some there's some process shots when he's going down that that thing where it's like it's obviously just him going. Ah, there are a lot. There are a lot of obvious, very obvious. Yeah, process for the time, shots. nobody cared. Like there's a lot well, I mean, of like every when you think about it, everything that you look at these days is process. It just looks really good, though. You know, I mean, like all that <laughs> stuff that you see, like in. Uh, we finished up the Marvel movies. What was the last one we looked at? Far From Home, right? Right. Lots of lots of process shots. It's just that they're so well integrated now. All that stuff of him flying around, a lot of times that's not anybody. Yeah. It's not that's not Tom Holland. That's just something they created in the computer. It just happens to look really good. This is one thing I noticed, David, uh, for the first time. When mm -hmm. I popped in this Blu-ray, um, I was hearing a complete stereo soundtrack. And it sounded yes. like it was re-recorded too, because when you listen to like like especially that dun 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 dun, dun de -dum, yeah. you can hear you can hear it on the left and right channels on the left channel it's dun dun, dun oh yeah dun. this is so it seems I'm, like they recorded this and they re-recorded it in stereo for the movie yeah i'm thinking and these are this is my theory on what they did and i think with the first three because everything was you know they were even goldfinger relatively low budget movie shot you know flat probably an optical soundtrack they just didn't have the original mix sound elements to remix it and that's why so by when the, when they get the thunderball those are an anamorphic and anamorphic films could have stereo tracks on them they had like these yeah. big magnetic tracks and i think that since they were able to do that, that's why from Thunderball on, they're able. They probably just went back to all the original sound elements and and were able to recreate a new 5.1 mix from that. And I think you can probably listen to the original mono. I, I don't want. know that I heard it in Thunderball. I did notice it I here, and, and I also noticed the sound design was really really good. I mean, I feel like they kind of smoothed over some stuff, and some of it sounded really really good. And they were they were pumping in explosions and gunshots going from left to right, and I. It was a pretty yeah, good it, sound mix, actually. It didn't. It almost felt like it was the original. To me, it sounded like it was the original sound elements, but you could just hear them way more clearly because they were able to go back and re and re because they're like also when, good bass too, really good bass yeah. for, for a movie oh, from yeah. 1967. Because last time we talked about Casino Royale, not really good sound, and it really kind of sounded kind of tinny, you know. When they open, when when the thing opens to to get the when the big uh, Cookie Monster <laughs> eats the the Pac Man eats the the ship. You can actually hear it like creaking open on the sound. Mm -hmm. You didn't. I don't think you heard that before. But it isn't. It isn't one of those like complete, total, utter like remixes. I'm I'm just pulling out of my head here at Terminator, where it has like a new stereo surround mix. But man, it's it, it they they changed some of the sound. So it's like if you remember the movie, if you've seen the movie multiple times, the old mono, 
it's these new sound effects that just don't sound right. Whereas this kind of, yeah, kind of like uh, what they did with the special editions of Star Wars. They changed, yes. they and changed sound effects, they changed different. dialogue. You know, this sounds like they just took the original sound elements that they had and just did clean them up. It, and it felt really, really natural. All right, so uh, where do we move? We were going to. Uh, He's meeting with Tiger uh, Tanaka. We got that far, I think. And you're like, how do you feel about me? <laughs> <laughs> I love you. <laughs> oh yes, that's the code word. That's the code phrase. Yeah. So they. I like the little private train that Tiger that they have. They go yeah, on a little. Apparently, private this subway. guy's so powerful and wealthy he has his own personal subway system. <laughs> well, so does cool. so does Blofeld. Like, right. He has his little thing to escape in. So, but he uh, his, the plan is to. Um, uh, go to this uh, Osato Chemicals company and pretend to be somebody. I, the only thing I got out of that was Karen D- Door, and she's gorgeous. <laughs> she's that redhead. She's, she's another evil a, redhead like Fiona Volpe. A businessman, some kind of. He wants He's to playing Mr. Fisher. Mr. Right, Fisher. Right. I'm an independent businessman. But they, they seem to be pretty much <laughs> completely on to him. Yeah, they see his gun. Yeah, that, his gun. and also like <laughs> when Karen goes over to the bar, the bar closet, if you will, she keeps <laughs> glancing over at him because she knows there was a body in there earlier. Yeah. And by the way, so at, later in the movie, they're like, you know, James, I thought James Bond was dead. It was like, well, if you knew James Bond was dead and you saw that article with the picture, you'd know that he was the same guy. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of hard to it's, hide uh, Sean Connery in Japan. Yeah. Now, of course, you know, you could even have later continuity issues where Blofeld doesn't recognize him, even though he fights him a lot in this movie. Yeah. In Honor mm-hmm. Majesty, but that, that, that's almost, was almost like a soft reboot if you think about it that way. Didn't we have some kind of a situation where we did see Blofeld again? Uh, not Charles Gray, of course, but later on in a Roger Moore movie. Yeah, it was yeah. Uh, for your eyes only, but he was, that's he was right. not. Right. Technically, because of legal reasons, he was not Blofeld, but the, they couldn't the call him that. They put but, him in the little outfit. But they put him in the, in the gray Nehru jacket yeah. in a helicopter. It was very sort of it was a very sort of honor manager Secret Service reference because he's he's got like the neck brace and he's in a wheelchair and you know, it's kind of like he's kind of like broken from from the bobsled situation. <laughs> <laughs> that should have been the name of the movie, the bobs the, bob the bobsled situation. situation. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a Ludlum book. Matt Damon is the bobsled situation. <laughs> um, so uh, after that, when are we going to get to the island? Because that, to me, is where the it gets. The island. Um, well, first he has, goes through this whole thing with the. I think he goes to the docks, and then he gets p- kidnapped by everyone. And the red-haired girl tortures him. I'm running through a bunch of stuff, but. And then she, they're kissing. First he wants to torture her, then they're kissing, and then yeah. he puts yeah. her in the plane and tries to kill him. And that's the life. <laughs> the life is that. That's all before we get to the to the island. So can we go to the island now? Sure, we can go to the island. Oh, wait, did you want to talk about Aki's dying? Aki's death? Well, she dies on the island. On the island. Oh, okay, that's convenient. The All day right. before he's supposed to get married. I don't know why he has to go through this ritual of marrying. I did not Well, understand. the whole idea is that he's supposed to, they're trying to make him Japanese. He's turning Japanese. He's really yeah. turning Japanese. <laughs> I really think so. Yeah, so. Oh, yeah, there's a bunch of like women in uh, bikinis or underwear. I can't really tell. But oh, they yeah, call, when he visits, like, you know. They call them um, Ama girls? Is that what they call them? Oh, that's when he's when he, he first meets uh, Tiger. You're talking about all those women that bathe him. And yeah, when he says, you know, and there's yeah, a couple okay. of white women that are just made up to look Asian. But I it, just, well, I, it, not, well, a lot of them. No, these are actual Jap, uh, Japanese. Act, well, the one giving the him a part. massage at first is obviously like a white woman with some eye makeup on. I guess <laughs> maybe, me. maybe, yeah. Uh, yeah. But I love that line. I mean, I'm, I'm a terrible person. He's like, you know, in Japan. Men come first. <laughs> women, women come second. I might just retire here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, I wanted to, I had a factoid about Ama Girls. Ama Girls actually uh, dive topless, just so everybody knows. <clears throat> they, they don't wear uh, bras. They they basically go topless when they when they do those things. It's, they di- wait, they go diving for like They go for pearls. Oh, pearls? Pearls okay. and coral. I'm sorry, is there some physical advantage to um, not wearing a top? Um, well, I guess when you're Asian, yes. Uh, no. that doesn't really make any sense, but okay. Oh, remember uh, at the time, uh, I'm horrible. I'm a horrible person, but at the time, Asian women did not were not very chesty. And they're a little different now with hormones floating around in everybody's food. But well, uh, these days, yeah, and and especially your Asian. American Asian women, they uh, they're big girls, sir. Um, uh. But uh, but yeah, the Ama girls are based, they just go diving. They go diving for anything. Gold. They'll look for gold. They'll go look for treasure. But they. Do a topless. They keep a knife. You know, that's like uh, Ursula uh, Andress and in, um, in Doctor No. She's yeah, diving. Yeah, she stuff. was diving. For but stuff. she's wearing that uh, that bikini. 
but she does have a um, uh, she has, has a knife, knife in her, her in and for for shells and all that kind of stuff. But I just thought it was interesting. They don't usually do that, but of course this is 1967. We can't have, but there's a couple of movies that were made in that time period where you can actually see Ama girls all as as God made them. Mm. Uh, but Wait, um, so when he goes to the island, that's when he gets the really cool helicopter thing from Little Nelly. Oh, oh, Nelly. Yeah. And our, we get our we get from our visit Q, from yes. Q and Q shows yeah, up. Yeah, visit from Q. He's 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 pissed it, off. In he's a mood, as usual, as always. Yeah. And um, he puts they put this helicopter together. It's really cool. They do a little sh- like a little shot where they show it being put together. I like that. It was sort of cute, cheesy, but yeah. cute. They just show it in stages, like ding, 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 ding. All the pieces come together. It's really cute. Mm-hmm. I want one of those things. I really do, <laughs> especially with the well, missiles. Obviously, uh, somehow he's able to fight. Multiple helicopters that have all kinds of weapons on them with that little thing with a couple of rockets on it. Oh, yeah. Well, he's probably a pilot too. And when I every time when I saw those helicopters coming at him, I just I just started going into the mash theme. You did too. <laughs> I did. <laughs> yeah, I you started did. going. Na, 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 na. <laughs> <laughs> it's just I guess suicide is painless. It's man. a subconscious yeah. thing. I, I you know you just you just want to do the mash theme theme song uh so they um okay and then we have that scene where they basically strip him naked they dye his hair apparently and uh. they put spirit gum on his eyes or whatever and put little prosthetics on his eyelids to make him look japanese really doesn't work no, doesn't they even work. comb his hair they give him like a, a comb uh they comb his hair forward because <laughs> I don't I, know I, what the hell and the thing helps, about it is yeah. He's just a big guy, and especially, I mean, your biggest guys over there. He's still way taller and bigger than they are. But I'm, I'm having a, I'm having a sort of a flash forward. You remember that movie he did uh, with Wesley Snipes? It was Rising Sun? Rising Sun, yes, I remember that. He's very, and of course, that would become the iconic uh, Sean Connery that uh, Daryl Hammond would do. He kind of did the, 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 the later '90s Connery with the same kind of hairstyle. Yes, and he would have. I'll take the rapist for five hundred. Yeah, um, first he started off as bald Connery, and then he did Rising Sun. But Connery. he's wearing a piece in that movie, and he also has it combed forward too. Mm-hmm. He's not doing that. But that was that I remember. And he was the guy who was into Japanese culture, if I'm not mistaken. But that was the yeah. He was a real is is Japaphobe acceptable? That'd be afraid of. <laughs> no, he, he was a he was a child. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Japaphile. You mean Japaphile? I don't know if that's a real word, but <laughs> phobe is the other opposite of what you mean. Orientophile, yeah. as I was saying. <laughs> yes, yes, he's a head taller than everyone else on the island, and he sticks out like a sword. Well, thumb. I was going to say that that <laughs> that uh, being combed uh, forward look was very popular in the '90s. Because a lot of people had that. Yeah, well, they called it a Caesar cut. I had, it. Caesar I had cut. it when I was trying yeah, to. Was I was trying to go for the. It's the Caesar cut. Yeah, I was yeah, trying to go for that, that kind of show, kind of create the illusion of hair. Is what I was trying. Because I do. remember uh, Duchovny in those. N- Clooney 90s had it definitely. Episode. Yeah. Clooney I'm thinking had of Clooney. One. Duchovny in the in the second and third season of X Files had one too. It was just a popular. I never engaged. I never indulged in that. In in the nineties, I had this kind of Q tip thing where they 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 shave the sides all the way around. Except they leave the top kind of fluffy, so you look like a Q-tip. <laughs> oh, was... I was thinking, so you're going kind of the Frank Whaley? Is that what you're kind of going for? Oh uh, no, because I didn't put I Cowboy didn't put Bebop? anything in it. No, no pomade. Yeah. No, no, mine was very comfortable. It wouldn't hurt you if you touched it. <laughs> that's that's kind of what mine looked like. I, I... Oh, I'd hurt you if you touched my hair. I tell you that. Right now. <laughs> I work on the hair and you touch it. Yeah, it uh, takes me took me hours to get that thing just the product just right, and then you're, just you're a regular wear. regular Ooh. Sam Malone. Uh, so, so, uh, and he was another one who did have another Caesar do. He looked creepy. He looked like Frankenstein when he did that. So, okay, apparently he has to get married. He's waiting. It's really cute, too, because this, he's he's seeing, like, all these kind of older women, and he's like, oh, God, they're going to pair me up with somebody hideous or something. And this gorgeous woman just pops up, and she's just wonderful. I love her. Didn't he say, like, face like a pig or something? Yeah, yeah she has a like face like him. a pig. That whole thing, that was, that's obnoxious, though. That whole thing, just because it's like, well, this is just work, and he's just faking it. Why does she have to be good looking? Because it's a movie, honey. You don't it's understand movies. movies. No, no, no. I understand for the sake of the movie why she has to. But why? No, does... that would have been a great. I just realized that would have been a great thing in an Austin Powers movie of somebody saying, you know, she's beautiful, but you have to marry her, and then she does have a face like a pig. Yeah, I mean, that exactly. Been funny. But like, and of course, you make a face. And you're like, Ooh. But is Bond your, is, is that being your like dreaded childish male g- male gaze that you're always talking about. Is that part of the whole thing? No, I, I don't know. It's just a, his attitude. James Bond's attitude as a character was obnoxious. That's all I'm saying. So are we talking like uh, the uh, uh, Mickey Rourke in Angel Heart male gaze? Is that what we're talking about? <laughs> 
I don't know. You, you've I never seen, seen it. Angel Hair, no, but she's never seen it. I bought the Blu-ray. We're probably going to watch uh, it soon because Alan Parker just died. Rest in peace. Alan I. It's, it's weird though. It was literally on cable like the last, just coincidentally, because you know they they schedule these things way ahead of time. It was on cable. I just caught it on cable. Just um, <laughs> this is a whole other show, but, uh, but yeah. One, I, I well, can you come up with one more example of a male gaze movie, David? Maybe she'll understand. I already do understand. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, he's trying to make a anything point. with oh, Shatner. How about anything with Shatner on the TV show where he just on Star Trek? Yeah, where we see all the beautiful women all the time on Star Trek. I guess. I mean, when it's all, when they do that sort of dreamy, soft focus thing, then yeah, that would be an example. Well, they're trying to make him look pretty. Yeah, I get it. It's a TV show. No, no, I'm not. There's <laughs> nothing wrong with pretty people on TV. It's on TV, and I didn't make up the concept of the male gaze. It's just like to me, it's like anytime you're focusing on a woman solely for the purpose of her body parts and beauty, that would be the male gaze. Well, she is really gorgeous, and she yeah. wears a bikini through most of the movie. Yeah, that's in fact, true. she's yeah. running around in a bikini while everyone else is wearing a uniform. Yeah, yeah. I can do the, I can do the male gaze. She, you just can't see it because it's all on audio. But man, I I could fix him with the mesmer stare. I just want to say <laughs> she climbs a mountain. With a bikini on, yeah, which is a lot more. Fun. It's really awesome. I think it's, I think I think it's hot. I think it's if I must, Paris Hilton here. That's hot. But I'm saying she's tougher than he is because he's wearing more than a bikini. Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, so they get married to go through their sham wedding. Of course, they didn't get a honeymoon. They sleep in separate beds or sort. And he, uh, he's visited by Aki, and they have uh, a little fun. And uh, they, they slide this poison down this line. It's brilliant too, actually, when you think about it. It's just that he turned over, and she wound up getting all the poison. Yeah, that was pretty so, messed up. And then she died, mm-hmm. and then you know, boo hoo ha. Well, back to the mission. Don't worry, she'll she'll be married with full honors at Arlington National <laughs> or whatever the equivalent. No, wait a minute. He's you're you're mixing up your Asian women. Well, I was just he, talking about. Aki. Well, I thought we should. Yeah, get I thought that Aki was a ways. He's to marry Aki. He doesn't. He he's with Aki. She dies. Oh, he he then, marries Kissy. Then he, mar- he marries Kissy. Yeah, Kissy Suzuki. I right. I think that he. <laughs> The Aki dies before he marries Kissy. Yeah, yeah. It's it sound the night like before. It was after. Yeah, it's yeah. The, the night way you before, described it. Yeah. And but well, I forgot about that. So he gets married to this girl. They go out there. Uh, they go to find this volcano. They find that there's a false bottom. Actually, it just made. It's sort of like sh- it's been coated with shellac to make it look like it's a real uh, lake inside a volcano. And it just opens up, and that's where the rockets are coming from. It's brilliant. Oh, and then we get on the inside of this thing. And it yeah. is absolutely incredible. Yeah. This this set and um, Spy Who Loved Me are the two I, most impressive sets. This cost time. this cost a million dollars. He asked, it like he it. said, "Yeah, it's worth Plus, it." And but there are, there are parts of it where it's they do use a model. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There's and there's also some forced perspective stuff there too. Yeah, where there's they, some. Yeah, there's foreground miniatures and everything. Yeah, like, you, you, can, you can definitely they, see well, that they have like little uh, little action figures or something. Yeah, at the end when stuff blows up, you can see the little action figures kind of bouncing off the. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's. I mean, a lot of it is really impressive. The only thing that really is is didn't look so good, but was probably really good for the time was the lava flow coming out of the thing at the end. That's the only thing that looked kind of actual pink. lava, but it was like two kind of, it was like this weird sort of it was too big printed plates of like actual lava on a, on a it was model. like this enormous gorge of lava and it was just too big for the, it should have been. By the way, how did nobody it? melt? I mean, you literally, you're shining by so first magma, you know, you're going you're gonna to burst into flame. <laughs> Liquid hot magma. <laughs> um, so we get there. He, uh, he frees these uh, these astronauts. He and he and they free the astronauts, and then they work yeah, on their is, own plan. And this is a lot of like recycled in Spy Who Loved Me, probably done in a better way, I would say. Yeah, I agree. Then you um, did remind me of that a lot. It's like there's a very a lot. They kind of like take because like Spy Who Loved Me was a ship that takes other ships. This yeah. is a ship that took other ships, and then you had like officers, and they need they needed those submarines so they could launch missiles. It's almost the same plot, but does and from the same director, by the way. That's um, right. Lewis Gilbert, probably. I'm think, I'm thinking the movie he did before this was Alfie. That was the movie he did right before this was Alfie. And That's a great movie, by the way. If people haven't seen it, it's a good he also movie. did Sink the Bismarck. I don't care how you do it, just Sink the Bismarck. Ooh. Uh, after that, he did a a, a bunch of movies. Um, before he got to Spy Who Loved Me, he did Moonraker. After that, Educating mm-hmm. Rita. Educating oh, Rita, nice. and, and then Shirley Valentine in the, in the late. And 80s. Shirley Valentine. He directed Shirley Valentine. <laughs> he said, "Hey, oh, you come over here. I can't. I can't." I can't uh, say what Tom Conti said in that movie. Otherwise, we'll lose our G rating. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm trying my best to keep this as family friendly as I can. Family probably... friendly. Hey, kids. Want some ice cream? 
All right. We get in there. He gets, uh, and also, again, I have to say that Kissy is a much better cohort with Bond than uh, Barbara Back. <laughs> and um, she's not even a spy. She doesn't get tell her anything he to do. They her, don't. She's a background character. At she's best. running around and fighting and everything. She doesn't get in tied the background. Up. Yes. Yeah, but she doesn't get tied up. And he tells her, "Go get, go get Tiger. Get, get Tiger and his men, and come back here and let's kick some butt." And, and then they come back and they're fighting. It's a big fight scene. Yeah, she's a gopher. Okay, it's very she's, You're right. She's much better. Oh come on. <laughs> Let it go. Uh, yeah, and they try to get. They try to get in the the thing, and it's sort of half open, and, and then the guy pushes a button and closes it. And half of them get in, and then one of them up there like puts like a blows a hole in it or something. What? Mm-hmm. Oh, tigers men when they yeah. when they come. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, because it's just made of cardboard. Really. I like how they dress them all like so you can tell which is tigers men. They all have the blue hats. They all have blue hat, blue condom hats is what Little, you kept calling them. Uh, uh, she was keeping it G rated. <laughs> hey, we can talk about condoms. All right. All right. They look like condoms, but they're not. They're into safe uh, counter terrorism. <laughs> 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 Whatever. Okay. Say it's a good message for the kids, right? Safe counterterrorism, everybody. And then we, you know, we finally get our look at Blofeld, and it's Donald Pleasance, of course. Yeah, and there was a, there was a, there was another Blofeld that they had who didn't look right, and I think that's the one where they, he literally looked like Father Christmas. They said, like he had a beard, he looked happy, and they're like, we can't, or either that, or he just couldn't do what he was supposed to do. Yeah, I'm mixing him up with. Oh, so they movie. replaced they replaced this guy and brought in yeah, Donald Pleasance. After like two days, they're like. Uh, we need somebody else, and we need somebody else fast. That's why they got Donald, Donald Pleasance, who is – like, every Blofeld is different. Mm-hmm. And every Blofeld I – mean, this is, like, super creepy. Right. I, I see what you're talking kind of about. Like, His name was like, Jan Werick. Mm-hmm. And uh, this, this Father guy, Christmas. Yes, he kind of looks like – he looks a little he like a little uh, beer, Father yeah. Christmas there. Father Christmas. This is where we get into the final fight. There's very little of this kind of confrontation between Bond and bad guy in this movie. It's just a mm-hmm. lot of stuff going on in the background, and it looks really good. It's a very impressive looking. I mean, production design wise too. I mean, it's this. I don't even think this got nominated for anything, did it? They didn't start nominating these movies until until uh, Spy Who Loved Me. I mean, isn't that yeah? You were talking about earlier about throwing the big blonde guy into the piranhas. That's basically repeated in the Spy Who Loved Me when they throw Jaws into the sharks. Yes. Only yes. The difference is you care a lot more when they throw Jaws to the sharks because he's been Jaws a much bigger pain in the butt. The shark. And Jaws this guy. Eats the shark. This guy this, just dies. This yeah. German guy. He's big and he's scary looking but he's he, no joss he cannot take care of himself with a bunch of and did i did i not say that i believe that they may have reused part of this set for a a production that was a harry saltzman production that was probably going on around the same time uh it's a harry palmer movie billion dollar brain there's like i, I remember watching I, this was years ago it's like on cable i'm like this looks similar to the you only live twice set a little bit there's like computer it's like a computer center but it's in some sort of cave and i'm like this looks Is very it, like, it was a ken adam doing it it was probably it could have been ken adam or if it was a saltzman production he could just take that set and put it wherever he wanted to put it i would think well Doesn't have to if, be if you adam are set. if you are a producer mm-hmm. you are not going to throw stuff away you are going to reuse oh, yeah. everything you can like roger corman always did that too i don't know that it says anything about ken adam here ken russell directed it are you kidding me yeah he, i i knew that he directed a straight movie that didn't it's, have, it's a weird movie from what I remember. It was it very show weird. nuns having sex it, on crosses or anything. There, there was some sort of like if the computer was going to take over the world or something. I can't even remember the plot of it. It was it was very not the Ipcrest file. I remember it like Ipcrest file is like sort of a Cold War spy thriller. This was not. This was like big. This was very inspired by James Bond going silly at the same Starring, time. Starring uh, Michael Caine, Carl Malden, Ed Begley Sr., he Susan would later George. crank out like a few more Harry Palmer movies, like I think like way later, like in the eighties. Well, is that just kind of like a, a, a variation on Bond? Is it like a poor man's yeah, Bond? It was, uh, I don't know if they were based on books or whatever, but yeah, they're more sort of cool. I think it was when I was talking about like Dr. No and how that kind of movie, like spy thrillers were more like Ip Crestfile than they were like Dr. No. They, mm-hmm. I don't think Ip Crestfile very action-packed it was more sort of spy thriller well this just says there's something uh, uh, along standing lines around of, talking and exchanging microfilm that kind of thing yes harry like palmer that, yeah. is a uh, a private investigator who once worked for british mi5 so he's kind of a bond but he doesn't have a license to kill anyone if, if i remember correctly uh harry palmer was uh was basically like either either join the military or go to prison <laughs> so he joined the military ah gotcha that was why he was there. Okay, so uh, when we finally get to the end of this whole freaking thing, he drops the cat, doesn't like the cat, cat doesn't like him anymore, <laughs> they don't like gunshots. The cat hides in the set for two weeks, yeah. Mm. And uh, he, he takes off. 
he gets into like an escape pod or something. And then well, what happens the last time we he... see him, he's like, I'm going to get you powers. Yeah. He, he he gets shot and then he kind of like he goes he, it's almost like they, they and then like the the thing goes on the goes on the track and, he, and then he goes away but then he kind of comes back oh i forgot Just, how awesome is that that uh monorail system they had running around yeah the, the set. monorail yeah. and, and then it looked somehow, practical too it looked and like then it he was knows exactly done. where the self-destruct system is because he just like opens up the yeah and he has and a special key it's like you know pushes the button and he's like he's like the hell with you Pushes the button, self destruct, and then he escapes. Yeah, James, and then they have their honeymoon. James Bond is in a floating device with Kissy. And... Yeah. Oh, of yeah. course, the British submarine has to pop up because it's and, in a weird yeah. reversed shot where it's like that was the only way they could get it to work. Where it's when the when the submarine's coming up, it's actually going down and because it's all every the water is. And reversed. also, if you notice, the submarine isn't completely containing that thing. It's only it's like yeah. teetering on the edge. It might fall mm-hmm. off at any time. So yeah, I get yeah. Makes sense it would be shot in reverse, just to make sure that you have it. But he ends up in, a, in another life raft with a beautiful woman. There you have it. Next, uh, James Bond will, will return in uh, Honor Majesty's Secret Service, but Sean Connery will not. And this is the uh, this is the last, I think, the last real Connery James Bond movie, because the next movie that he does is really a paycheck movie. He does it for the money because they offer. Uh, it. I would. I mean, when I when we watch it and we get to it, I have a sneaking suspicion I might end up liking Diamonds Are Forever more. <sighs> I don't know. <laughs> Than this, only because Connery, he, he, I mean, it's this weird thing where he has this. He, he looks like he's having fun because he knows he's getting paid. Yeah, he, and when he's, he when looks he's like he's paid, having fun. But the problem, he's, he looks like he's having fun, like when he's doing like the Highlander movies of like where he was making tons of money to come in for two weeks. Yeah, <laughs> and he looks like he's having fun. This he doesn't is, look bored. But he it's looks a different. Engaged. This is like a different movie, and, and I feel like it's missing a lot of beats. I feel like it doesn't it doesn't stick to the formula and it what's more it's kind of a Las Vegas movie so it's got this real made for TV feel to it. That's, well, that's, that's the thing they, I didn't it, like about it. It's got a slightly lower budget and a good chunk of that budget was just to pay him. Yeah. You're so talking that's, about uh, that one ahead right. of time. It's time yeah. for, I guess it's time for final thoughts. Start with Bronwyn. Oh, thanks. Uh, yeah, so it's interesting after going through this conversation with you all, I realize how similar The Spy Who Loved Me is to this movie, but I definitely prefer The Spy Who Loved Me. This one is just kind of, uh, it's just okay. There's other Connery ones that I like more. It was entertaining. That's all I can say. Uh, what do you think, uh, David B. Anderson? Uh, like I said, I felt that this is, in in the best possible meaning of the word, it's very generic. It's it's your it's sort of your your Bond greatest hits. If just if Connery looked was more engaged and and gave a crap about what he was doing and it was a little tighter, it might be higher on the list. But it doesn't have I mean, like I was kind of going through of like Doctor No, it's cheap and it's low budget, but it looks like they're really trying, and, and it's like they're really trying to do something new and interesting and fresh, and it's got like it's got kind of a like fun to it and everything. Russia with Love is is like okay, we've established what this is, let's have let's mix it up, let's do let's kind of do more of a Cold War spy thriller, and we'll put in some action and we'll put a little bit of that, and that's very popular. Then you get to Goldfinger, and that's just like they know exactly what they're doing. The formula is in place. Let's have a ton of fun with it. Let's let's let you know he's got Connery's got that twinkle in his eye. He's still having fun. Then you get the Thunderball, and that's a little. It's like okay, we're doing, this is almost like the contractual obligation movie because they kind of had to do it because of the Kevin McClory stuff. And then they right. do that. And it's like this is they're at the point of like we want to give the audience what they want, and sometimes giving the audience what they want is okay and sometimes giving the audience what they want is is not okay and in this case it's like it's i still like probably like this better than thunderball because thunderball has great little segments in it that don't quite come together whereas this this is more sort of a cohesive narrative even if it doesn't have quite the the zing of a thunderball it's more consistently decent and again when you watch these movies it's like they're all good. <laughs> I can watch these and still be entertained mm, and, and be, yeah. like, get sort of my fix. So, but I would put this kind of above Thunderball. But I mean, when we, when we start really making our big list, it'll probably be kind of near the middle, mm. near middle bottom for me when we finally get to all of them. But for right now, it's it's hovering around number four, wow. just above Thunderball. Number four on your list from the top. Yeah. Ah, okay. Well, this this is interesting for me because this movie, You Only Live Twice, is number three on my list as far mm-hmm. as the best 
James Bond movies. Where I put Thunderball. All of them. All 22? All, or all, all 24? Yes. All the way. All the way. Uh, Thunderball, wow. I have down near the bottom, actually, right next to Diamonds wow. Are Forever. Uh, you Only Love Twice is my favorite Connery movie. It has This is the movie for me that has everything. It has incredible exotic locations. We get to learn about different cultures. And a lot of this stuff is probably new to the audience at the time in 1967. It's almost like looking at an alien environment right on your own planet. And he, he, there's beautiful women everywhere. The sets are incredible. The, the, the photography is really good. The only thing I didn't like was that lava flow that looked really crappy. And some of the process shots looked a little crappy. But, but mm -hmm. otherwise, I, 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 it's, Connery is a lot more comfortable and in control in this movie than I think he was in the previous ones. I think this is when he knew he was Bond and he would go down in history as an iconic figure. He knew it around this time. Maybe well, not possible around Thunderball, but definitely around this time. I, I got to say, I felt like, a, a, I, and this is no fault of the movie, but I felt still somewhat damaged by those last two that we had to watch. Wow. <laughs> like, and and I, I'm like, and, and think of the think of the audience, because like they, they'd cranked out two kind of ripoff movies back to back and various other, like people were going to these movies. So when people, and this, this movie, was, oh, by the way, I forgot to mention, this movie came out less than two months after Casino Royale and Operation Kid Brother came out. So 67 was a year of Bond. So it's, oh, yeah. It's interesting. And you're interpreting Connery's performance as comfortable or as Anderson's interpreting it as bored and uninterested. And he does I, look bored. I'd be more I, on I, the I'm bored and uninterested camp with this one. I found him to be like, okay, I am Bond. I'm going to do this. I am Bond. I'm going to do this. I, he has more like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to get my money. I'm going to go home. I mean, I kind of like my Bond it's under kind of pressure. And it's like, yeah, but it's kind of attention. a fun job if you're Sean Connery playing James Bond, especially in this movie. You get to travel to distant lands. You get to meet uh, beautiful people, oh, interesting people. When you watch the making of, you'll see why he didn't want to do this anymore. Because when he went to Japan, you think you think James Bond's popular in England and America. In Japan, they go crazy about that. So it was like the stuff. Beatles. Yeah, I'll bet. It was like the Beatles. He literally couldn't do anything. Oh, well, yeah, I'm nothing. sure. I'm sure because these During movies that, have incredible international appeal. They made more money overseas than, mm -hmm. than here and in England. And he's like, my con. I don't. I think he's like, my contract is up. Uh, I don't really need to do this anymore. I'm getting offers from other people. This, these are getting hard to do. Um, yeah. they're not, they're still not going to pay me what I think I'm worth. Cause you know, by yeah. then you're like, he's like, well, why am I not getting paid? Yeah, exactly. And then this is when they had to start paying their actors too. Cause they, mm -hmm. they, they paid Lazenby. They paid him very, very well. And then now, I don't paid, know how much, they, I don't know how much they paid Lazenby for the first one, but I do know that he like, he, he made more contract. money than he made more money than Connery did in the first few movies, you know? No, well, there you go. So and they that's probably, because they had to. You, like I said, when you want somebody, you got to pay them. So, and he, you know, well, we'll get to that when we get to that. But yeah, yeah. Think, yeah. sing us time. out of here, Broman. Okay. Well, thanks for listening, everyone. Next time we'll be talking about. Aren't you going to do a little Nancy Sinatra for us? I no. Well, I don't know that song. Uh, you you only sing? live twice. No, no, let me do it. You only live twice. You only live twice. <laughs> 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 No, big, no, no. You Why don't we whip out? Twice a how about we, mul can we whip out the multiple covers? Because I, I'm going to send you, when we're done here, I'm going to send you the multiple covers of various artists doing the songs. Please do. Uh, Maybe I'll throw one of them in. And please do, because there are some good ones in there. You uh, only live twice. I forgot how to do it. Nothing beats the instrumental, though, really. The, the, the John Barry score, that's probably the best part da, of this movie. Da, 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 which, by the way, was ripped off. I'll send you. I'll send you various things, and you can put them in various places because you're the editing. All right. Come on. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. 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 We'll see you again for um, on our Majesty's secret other fellow. Yes. <laughs> on our Majesty's secret other ball. Bye. Anyway, it is. Good night. Good night.